there's of course notoriously a lot of controversy about how much is predetermined by the genes and how much the mind is a blank slate and obviously you're a protagonist in that do you think there are actual evolutionary darwinian reasons for some predisp some genetic predispositions in the in the mind well for one thing blank yes blank slates don't do anything and unless there's some kind of uh, set of motives uh, one can't have a, an, an intelligent system that uh, that does anything that processes some of the input and ignores others that treats certain inputs as reinforcers it's and got to have some criterion for deciding when it's learning you can't do everything by learning there's got to be some criterion for deciding which should be taken as positive reward which should be taken as punishment something of that sort that exactly. at least if nothing else that's got to be built in exactly and and also the way in which one analyzes the the sensory input uh, you can have you could imagine a uh, a uh, mimicking bird that, when exposed to human speech, would be able to mindlessly repeat, reproduce the sound sequence. That's clearly not what our children do. Our children, although of course they have to take an in input from the world, they, they have to listen uh, to whether their uh, community is speaking English or Japanese or, uh, or Swahili. What they do in listening to those sentences is they chop it into words, they look for the grammatical regularities that group them into phrases. They don't just reproduce the, the sound like parrots. Uh, so there are multiple ways of learning which depend on what species you belong to. You could imagine a continuum between having almost all learned with just a very bare minimum criterion for what to learn and building in just about everything. And uh, I suppose people have always been a bit biased to thinking that humans rely on learning more than other species. Is it true to say that evolutionary psychologists are seeing more and more that there is rather more detail built in from the start than we had supposed? Uh, yes, I, I would, I would uh, argue that that's the case, which doesn't mean that humans are insensitive to input or don't engage in learning. The question is, how many different kinds of learning are there and how, to what extent is each form of learning tailored to a particular problem. Do we learn to uh, an eye for beauty in a different way than we learn uh, the grammatical rules of our language, which in turn is different from how we learn about the physical world, like what makes objects fall and, and bounce and roll the way they do. So it's not, I don't see it so much as a conflict between nature and nurture, but rather fleshing out uh, how nurture is rooted in nature, that is, what we pay attention to, what conclusions do we draw, how do we analyze the input, uh, what motivates us. And that, I think, throws you back into nature because you can't learn everything. A learning system has to have the machinery that allows it to learn. That machinery, I think, ultimately has to be explained in terms of evolution. Human children uniquely learn language and uh, I, I think it's right to say, isn't it, that natural selection or they, they have evolved at any rate brain mechanisms which enable them to learn language remarkably swiftly. Other species don't have that. And this leads people, linguists like you, to say that there's some deep structure which is uh, in common between all languages. I think lay people often find that hard to believe because they hear languages sounding so very different. What does it mean to say that there's some deep commonness between all languages. Yes. Well, in fact, late, I think lay people's intuitions can go in both directions. Because I've, on the one hand, you do notice the diversity across human languages, especially when you learn a second one. On the other hand, when you look at your kids and you see that by the age of, of two and a half or three, they're stringing words together into fluent grammatical sentences without having been uh, explicitly taught. A lot of parents say, this is just a miracle. Now I know what you mean by the, the idea that children are, are wired for language. So clearly they can't be wired for words, they can't be wired for grammatical constructions, at least not the particular ones in any language. Uh, what they can be wired for is uh, a, um, an ability to find words, a, an ability to ferret out the, the rules that combine them into meaningful phrases and sentences. And that can't be taken for granted. Just listening to speech, uh, which is what a tape recorder can do, isn't enough to get you to produce and understand new sentences, ones that you haven't heard before. Sentences like uh, the, the journalist's cliche that um, you know, when a, a man bites a dog, that's a newsworthy story. Uh, fantasies like the cow jumped over the moon and the dish ran away with a spoon. 
uh, brand new combinations of words that we didn't simply memorize from our parents, but that any child can understand on first hearing and produce new ones of their own. And we see this when children start to make errors like uh, we hold the baby rabbits or uh, why did the waiter disappear, that is make it disappear, where the children are clearly uh, analyzing quite deeply the speech that they hear and are already showing off the talent of recombining words into grammatical combinations. Most, they end up with an ability that is, uh, that matches that of their parents and on the way their errors show us that they're engaging in this process of grammatical analysis. Languages differ not only in vocabulary but also in, in grammatical rules. I mean, German puts past participles at the end, for example. Uh, so what you're saying is that children are born with the ability not just to ferret out the words but to, to, to make grammatical rules which won't be the particular ones because they don't know if they're going to be brought up speaking English or French or German or Chinese, but they, they do have a mechanism for organizing sentences into grammatical rules which they have to get by listening to their parents and peers talking. Exactly right, yeah. yes. So w what, if anything, is innate will have to be highly abstract. And it, this, I think, forces us to reconsider uh, the, the nature-nurture debate. It, there, I don't think there can be a debate as to whether a particular behavior is innate or selected by the forces of evolution. Whatever was selected is not going to be something that we recognize from our common sense observations of behavior. In the case of language, it's going to be something like an abstract universal grammar that doesn't correspond to the grammar of any particular language and might be pretty schematic. It might I've just be... I've trouble understanding that. Yeah. What that, what that schematic abstract general grammar would look like, since it isn't going to be any particular grammar. Yeah. It'd be much nicer if all languages had the same grammatical, th the same grammar but just different words or something, but it, since they are yes. so very different. It, it would, it would, for example, it would be something that would not specify the order of subject and predicate, but might say that all languages have a subject and predicate, that would not specify the order of a verb with respect to its various objects, but say that there is a grouping of a verb with its various objects. Right. That would not say that there is, that suffixes stand for plural or past tense, but that words can have suffixes. So it would be highly schematic. Uh, it would not be nearly enough to speak with. It would be enough to uh, allow the child to organize all of that sound coming out of their parents' mouths in, in the right ways. Um, and so it would be uh, it would be rather um, paltry compared to the richness of any particular language. And it may not correspond to anything that a, uh, a grammar school teacher would teach you. It might be even more abstract than nouns and verbs, but something like a distinction uh, between symbols that is, uh, that in some languages is more nouny versus more verby kinds of words. But as long as that distinction is made, that might be uh, all the child is need and the most that the child has to be uh, born with. Coming back